this might very well be one of the best wired mice as of now, December 2020. I know I'm a bit late with this one as it came out like a year ago, but you should definitely consider picking it up if you haven't already. Almost all mice have some flaws, but this mouse basically checks all the boxes. It's not for everyone though, but at the end of the video you'll know if this mouse is good for you. Endgame Gear announced the new XM1R, which is basically a better version of this one. I'll go over that one a bit as well, but they're mostly the same. The packaging is decent, nothing too special. This is the Endgame Gear XM1 non-RGB version. The newer RGB version is almost identical, it just has better switches for the mouse buttons and, of course, RGB. But the RGB version is 10 grams heavier. The normal version that I got here weighs in at around 70 grams. It's 122 by 65 by 38 millimeters and has a 3389 sensor, which is basically the best on the market. It has an ambidextrous design with two side buttons on the left side. The build quality of this thing is amazing. Very sturdy, feels like quality. It has no side flex whatsoever, no bottom wobble, no creaking. Its weight is also pretty damn good. Not the lightest, but given that it doesn't have a honeycomb design and it's like a medium sized mouse, it's just good. The mouse has a very unique shape as it has its bump quite far towards the back and the button height is pretty low. This makes it very nice to claw grip, one of the best shapes I've tried so far. Comparing this to like a Viper Ultimate, it's slightly wider, it doesn't have the fronts flaring out, and you really put the back of the mouse against your palm, which you can't really do with the Viper as that one feels very low. It is relatively wide. This tool is from gearsearch.gg by the way, fucking amazing, link in the description. The mouse has no noticeable button wobble, when shaking it you only hear the scroll wheel. Amazing stuff, nothing to remark here. The cord is also either the or one of the best stop cords on any mouse. Super flexible and lightweight, you really don't need to get a paracord with this one. It's better than the ascended cord of a glorious mouse. Don't even get me started comparing this to a traditional rubber cable. It has PTFE feet as well which are pretty decent after they break in. They aren't rounded though, which might be a problem to some people, including me. I was using this mouse with the glorious Helios hard pad and somehow one of the feet got ever so slightly messed up making it very scratchy. This is almost not visible to the human eye, I really had to look for it, but you'd really notice it while gaming. The glide is really scratchy now but only in some directions. I hope Endgame Gear fixes this in future versions of this mouse. Luckily the feet are very easy to replace with aftermarket feet, so this isn't too big of a problem. I'd say the buttons are the least special thing about this mouse. In my opinion they are kinda average. Not bad though. Luckily the new version of this mouse, the XM1R, does have the upgraded buttons which are basically the best on the market right now. The main buttons on the regular XM1 have very little pre-travel and not a lot of post-travel, which is not bad. The scroll wheel is very tactile and feels pretty decent. Here's a quick sound test. The side buttons do have quite a lot of post travel. Something to keep in mind, I personally don't use them that much. Overall they're just decent. And then something that's overlooked way too often in my opinion is the coating. And oh my, the XM1 has an excellent coating. Personally I didn't really like the coating on the Model O- so I got grips for that one. And the Viper Ultimate wasn't too bad but it could have been better. The XM1's coating is really grippy. All my other mice almost feel oily in comparison. Even when my hands are a bit sweaty, this thing just keeps it grip. Just listen how my finger doesn't just glide over the material. Yeah, it's really sick. It's some sort of grippy plastic and the side has just a hint of rubbery feel. Fingerprints on the white version are really not noticeable, you can only see them in the right lighting and perfect angle, so nothing to worry about. Not sure about the black versions though. Like I said, this mouse checks all the boxes. 
amazing shape, great coating, nice feet, decent clicks, good weight, one of the best stock cables and it looks nice and minimalistic in my opinion. Who is this mouse for? I'd say people with around medium sized, slightly wider hands. Mine are 19.5 by 10 centimeters and it fits very nicely. This mouse is by far best for claw grip. You could still fingertip this mouse fine, but I think there are better alternatives out there in that case. And you just don't want to palm this guy. Overall I think this mouse is insane. If you are a claw gripper that likes a back hump, definitely check this one out. The new XMR has better switches, an option for bigger feet and new coatings. The Black Frost version looks amazing. Please send me one endgame gear. That makes it an even better deal at just around 60 euros or like 70 dollars. The XM1 is my new main. The dream would be a wireless sub 70 gram XM1R with rounded feet. Please make it happen. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments. A like and sub would be massively appreciated, as almost none of you are subscribed unfortunately. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.